Hi, my name is Dr. Mark Bessler. I'm director of the Bariatric Surgery Program here. I've been doing weight loss surgery for about 25 years. And today we want to answer some commonly asked questions together with my partner, Dr. Abraham Krakeli. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Dr. Abe Krakeli. I'm one of the bariatric surgeons, uh, minimally invasive uh, robotic surgeons here at Columbia. And uh, I'm excited to talk to you guys about uh, what we do here and uh, answer some of the common questions. So how do you decide if you're a candidate for weight loss surgery? Mostly it's based on criteria from 1990s, looking at BMI, which is a measure of weight relative to height, as well as medical problems associated with it, a desire to make change, and the need for weight loss. In this country, to qualify for bariatric surgery, we use a metric called BMI, body mass index. If you say that somebody's 300 pounds, well, what does that mean? Are we talking about Shaquille O'Neal who's seven feet tall, or are we talking about somebody who's five feet tall. So to qualify for bariatric surgery, you need to have a BMI of 40 or a BMI of over 35 if you also have a medical problem that's associated with obesity such as diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea. And different insurances have different requirements uh, when it comes to that. If you're considering bariatric surgery, it's generally because the weight as well as the medical problems that are associated together with the weight is impacting your life, the quality of life, as well as risk to your future health, life expectancy, and other problems down the road. The things that you've considered plan A, lifestyle, nutrition, exercise, using medications, and talking to other specialists, they haven't worked for you. Bariatric surgery has proven time and time again to be very effective, both at achieving weight loss as well as uh, treating and oftentimes resolving many of the medical problems that are associated with obesity. You need bariatric surgery if your weight has dramatically impacted your life and you can't keep it off otherwise. Most people can lose weight. The keeping it off is the hard part. The body fights back with increased hunger and slowing metabolism. How do you maintain that decreased intake of calories? How do you maintain that diet when you're hungry all the time? And really what bariatric surgery does, and the only thing bariatric surgery does, is help you feel satisfied from a smaller amount of food. So you need bariatric surgery to help control hunger. You need bariatric surgery to help you manage your weight because managing it alone is just too difficult. You know, a lot of people think, well, I'm not suffering from my obesity too much right now. I can be active, et cetera. But just being obese increases the risk of developing cancer over 40%, increases the risk of diabetes multiple times, increases the risk of heart disease, stroke, et cetera. And by the time those things happen, sometimes they're irreversible. You need bariatric surgery not only for the, what you're suffering with now, quality of life issues, but really for the long-term quality of life, survival, and medical benefit. there's two parts to that. One is doing the workup that's necessary to make sure that you walk into surgery ready and prepared and all your medical problems will be well managed and you're fully optimized. And the second side to that is the insurance requirement. But whatever the scenario, uh, our office is very well uh, aware of the different requirements and will be able to help guide you. For bariatric surgery, many insurance companies have put processes in place to slow you down. Some require six months of medically supervised diet and exercise. But because of advocacy, more and more insurance companies are no longer requiring that. They still do require psychological evaluation. It's obviously important to have a nutritionist consultation. We want to make sure your vitamin levels are good and that you're in your best health beforehand. Or concretely, almost nobody ends up with surgery in less than a month. And some patients, it takes up to a year and a half. Our goal is to make it as efficient as possible to do safely and to meet the requirements of your insurance company. Average three months if your insurance company doesn't have dramatic requirements of time before surgery and eight to nine months if they do have that six month requirement. Let me first say you don't have to have decided already that you want to do this before you come consult with us. We're here to help you make that decision. Second of all, call the office or reach out online to request an appointment. We'll walk you through the process, which for some insurances is more complicated than others. Basically, you need to meet with your surgeon and the staff, nutritionist, and meet your insurance's requirements. But we're gonna do a lot of testing to make sure that you're ready for surgery, that you're medically optimized for surgery, because we're interested not just in getting you there, but making sure you have the best outcomes. For sure, every battle is won before it's ever fought. Bariatric patients are some of the sickest patients in our population, lots of medical problems, and, and the way to make sure that we, we get that good outcome is to get to the 
operating room already ready to win. The incisions for most of these surgeries are all very similar. We do all these surgeries minimally invasive, laparoscopic or robotic, small cuts on the belly. The locations of the incisions for the different surgeries just vary very slightly. In the old days, these operations used to be done through a 6 to 10 inch upper abdominal incision. The risk of hernia and infection was high. This has changed so much with minimally invasive approaches. Five small incisions, the infection risk is much lower, the length of recovery is shorter and really the incisions are amazingly small compared to what we're doing inside. Because the incisions are a lot smaller, uh, pain tends to be a lot less as well. I mean, some of our patients go home and they actually can't even believe that we actually did any surgery because they don't feel any pain, but pain also is a very individual thing and different uh, patients will experience it very differently. Weight loss after surgery is fairly predictable in the first month or so, and then varies a lot after that. Depending on the operation, of course, it can be different. But with the main operations we're doing, gastric bypass, sleeve gastrectomy, duodenal switch, it's about a pound a day in the first month. Roughly, that gets cut to about a half a pound a day in the next few months and slows from there on. The uh, lap band or adjustable banding is a little different because the weight is slower lost until the band is adjusted properly, and even then it's a slower weight loss process. The most common surgery we do, the sleeve gastrectomy, the average weight loss is about 60 to 70 percent of extra weight. Uh, for a gastric bypass, it's similar, but maybe a little bit closer to 70 percent. Uh, and for a duodenal switch, it's a little bit more than that. For a lap band, uh, it, it's a bit lower, I would say about 40 to 50 percent. For patients, sometimes it's hard to understand what excess weight means. But if you cut those numbers in half, so roughly if your starting weight is 300 pounds, a band you get about 15% of that starting weight loss, sleeve about 30% of that starting weight loss, a bypass about 35% of that starting weight loss, and a duodenal switch is closer to 40% of your starting weight loss. So if you go with a sleeve at 30% of 300 pounds, that would be about 90 pounds weight loss. When you're seen and evaluated by us, we'll go over your specific height, weight, and expected weight loss, of course. Our motto for our program is weight loss for life. So we start with a careful evaluation of your medical condition. We work to maximize your medical condition to get you in best shape for surgery as you can. And after surgery, we're there to support you all the way with follow-up nutrition visits, follow-up visit with the surgeon as well as with the nurse practitioners. Getting to the surgery, the surgery itself and the process after the surgery, it's really a team sport. Along the way, you're gonna meet all of the other members of that team, very important members. In addition to that, uh, we have uh, support groups led by our nurse practitioners as well as our nutritionists. They help you guide through various topics together with other patients and you get to share experiences and ask questions and learn from one another in addition to having your own questions directly answered by us. Certainly each operation has its own potential side effects and every operation has complications. We pride ourselves on Number one, having a low rate of complications and managing them really well. And number two, focusing on minimizing side effects and helping you manage them so that they're really not impactful in your life. And we'll talk about each, the individual complications that might happen one-on-one, -on -one. Um, but for the most part, we work really hard to reduce those things, and it's unusual to find a patient who's unhappy or has a poor outcome than might be expected based on their risk level. I'd like to highlight that these surgeries are very, very safe. We've come a very long way from the origins of bariatric surgery. We've learned a lot about uh, how bariatric surgery works, about the management of uh, patients with obesity, as well as a, an improvement and continued refinement and advancements in technology. So today we get to use technologies that are a lot better, uh, and as a result, we're able to get very consistent, reliable, and, and safe results. Also balance that against the improvement in medical problems and mortality from obesity itself, you can get back 60, 70, 80% of the time that you would probably lose of your life from carrying that weight around by having the operation. So really the risk is greatly outweighed by the benefits of the surgery. Gastric bypass patients spend two days in the hospital on average, although some patients who are really well and doing great can leave on the first day. Most patients after a sleeve gastrectomy leave the hospital on the first day after surgery. We're not yet doing that as an outpatient, 
but banding can be done as an outpatient and generally is done as an outpatient. And duodenal switch, about the same two days as a gastric bypass um, operation. We rarely let a duodenal switch patient out of the hospital before day two. When patients uh, are in the hospital in the, in the post-op recovery period, they tend to be in a specialized area of the recovery room and then up to a specialized uh, floor in the hospital and the nurses are special trained to understand the specific needs that bariatric surgery patients have. Eating after surgery, our goal is for it to be as normal as possible, just limited amounts and maybe speed of eating. Early after surgery, there's a progression of diet from liquids to pureed foods to soft solid food and then regular food. But our ultimate goal is for you to be able to eat almost anything you want in limited portions. Our desire is to maximize weight loss and to do that, we try and eliminate carbohydrates as much as possible. Your meal goals are to focus on protein and low carbohydrate vegetables. Six ounces is what we recommend as the size of a meal. That's about what a sleeve pouch can hold. And much more than that is not really necessary in order to achieve a sense of satiation. But it can take 15 to 20 minutes after you've eaten that amount of food to get that sensation. So what we really recommend is a small plate, a small spoon or fork, eat that six ounces slowly, chew it carefully, and then walk away. We recommend you eat five times a day, you know, maybe three meals plus two snacks or even five meals if that's what it takes. Take a normal meal, cut it in half and eat it twice. By keeping the meal sizes small, we don't stretch the stomach and therefore you can keep the weight loss going and keep feeling satiated from a smaller amount of food. For most patients, they're able to eat most foods, just eat slowly, chew well in small portions. There are some foods that you may uh, either like now uh, based on taste, texture, or smell, uh, that those preferences may change afterwards. Foods that tend to be very difficult to chew and thick, those are the ones like, like dry meats tend to be tougher for many patients, but most patients are still able to tolerate those as well if you chew well enough, take small portions and eat slowly. The hospital stay is one to two nights, and then my rule of thumb for most patients is recovery outside the hospital about two to four weeks. That doesn't mean that you're in your pajamas in your bed all day. You're up, up and around and living life. What is really important is regardless of which surgery you do, um, the first two weeks, it's important to make yourself a priority. Teach yourself how to eat again with your, with your small stomach to get a sense of what you can tolerate and, and how quickly you can tolerate it. Recovery after surgery is pretty similar for most of the operations we do. You know, there are small incisions now and so the pain is not significant or dramatic for most patients for very long after the surgery. We see most patients at a week after surgery and pain isn't a significant issue anymore. As far as getting back to work, depending on how physical your job is, we recommend two weeks really because you need to focus on yourself on the small amounts of drinking liquids frequently and by that we mean three to four times an hour every hour through the whole day. If your job is very physical, just the limitations of having had surgery, we recommend more like three weeks out of work. The most important thing is that you work with us on determining what you're ready to move on to the next stage. Setting up your environment, your home environment, your work environment, that's really kind of the secret sauce, the, the structure you build around this, making sure that you achieve the, your goals, that you achieve success. It starts by learning how things need to change and also getting a better insight of how things are currently in your home environment and, and what could be optimized further. Practically after surgery, recognize that you're going to be on a liquid diet and protein shakes are going to be an important part of it. So before surgery, try out some different ones find the ones you tolerate the best or even like, and you're gonna be on a liquid diet before surgery, so you're gonna practice with that and be prepared for it afterwards. A lot of people will take ice cube trays, which have about one ounce little sections, and freeze whether it's broth that they're gonna need after the surgery, pureed foods that they might prepare in advance. You're not going home needing bandages. Um, almost nobody goes home needing drains or anything like that, so you don't need gauze and tape and all that stuff. There's gonna be glue on the incisions that's waterproof. So really it's just about having the foods around that you need and helpful, supportive uh, people around you. So first of all, New York Presbyterian is for sure the best hospital in New York City, has been for over 20 years. 
Columbia University certainly has the best doctors in this city. When you combine those two things, an amazing hospital and an amazing medical staff, not just your surgeon, but people all around that, you're in really great hands. We're committed to you for life. We have nurse practitioners and nutritionists as part of the practice because we're committed to taking care of you for life. Whether you stay with us or get your follow-up somewhere else, we want to make sure that that's done right and we're here for you if things aren't going well. Robotic surgery is one of the things that, that we're very excited about here. Uh, when it comes to robotics and bariatrics, we're, we're among the national uh, leaders in pioneering the application of the latest robotic technologies to bariatric surgery. And we've been doing this a lot longer than uh, many of the other programs in the area. And I really believe that this is going to be the future. First of all, outcomes of pregnancy after bariatric surgery are better than outcomes of pregnancy before bariatric surgery. That's because being obese, carrying around significant amounts of weight, increases the risks of pregnancy, diabetes during pregnancy, and complications of pregnancy. Second, amazingly, children born to mothers who've had weight loss surgery are less likely to be overweight and obese than children born to mothers before they've had weight loss surgery. So somehow the environment of growing up either in utero or in the house afterwards with a person who's had bariatric surgery makes it less likely that your children are gonna be overweight. We do want you to check your vitamin levels before getting pregnant. So after surgery, yearly vitamin checks are important. We certainly don't want you to go into pregnancy with deficiencies. But almost all deficiencies that develop can be corrected. And if once corrected, outcomes of surgery should be terrific. We encourage patients not to get pregnant during the first year after surgery but some patients are more fertile after surgery. And we've had patients get pregnant early after surgery and gotten them through it with really good results. In summary, weight loss surgery can dramatically improve your quality of life, your length of life, and our program here at New York Presbyterian Columbia University is here to help guide you through that for life. Weight loss for life is our motto. With bariatric surgery, we add years to people's lives and we add quality of life to people's years.